I wanted to talk with the community about Pester version 5, and I think this is the best, best option that I will get this year to gather around some people, and uh, I want to listen to your feedback about what you would want and what you would want to avoid in Pester version 5. So I posted this document that outlines pretty much all of the all of the new features, and I will just quickly go through it through some of the examples. Hopefully, I can do that in like five to ten minutes. And then I would love to discuss like uh, some questions that I have and that I would want to get some feedback about. So yeah, let's open this up. Um, if you want to see this version of the document, and you can open it on your laptop, then it's just Pester Issues, the first one that's there. So the biggest question for me that I would love to uh, talk about is what would you prefer? Like uh, better compatibility with Pester version 4, but with some of features because they are impossible to do in the same model but then you would get like a simpler migration and then version 4 would be just uh, a small evolution above, uh, version 5 would be small evolution above version 4. Or for me, the preferred option, less compatibility with, uh, with Pester version 4, and uh, then it would be quite difficult to migrate, or maybe not, but I don't want to rely on saying it will be easy to migrate, but you will get all the new features. Or some other options. So for me, the ideal way forward is that there will be version 5 and version 4, and version 4 will have some like extended support with what it is now. It will get patches if there are some extreme problems. Like right now, people started uh, reporting that after some update to Windows, code coverage became extremely slow. So that's something that would definitely be patched in the future version, but there wouldn't be probably any new features in version 4 after version 5 is released. And this would probably give us best of the both worlds, so you could still have your own old, like l very large test bases based on version 4, and maybe eventually the support for PowerShell version 2 would be dropped for, from version 4, but maybe there's no reason if it will be just patched. And then if you started a new test base, you would start with version 5, and you could start using the new syntax, uh, using the new scoping, and so on. So if you have anything to say to this and you want to discuss it, please like come sit somewhere in the first few lines, because then we don't have to shout across the whole room. And so let me just go very quickly through the new features. So the first feature is dropping PowerShell version 2 support, because it's very long overdue and it only brings problems to the people who want to invest their time and extend, extend Pester, we can cap it also on version like 4.9 in the old uh, version 4, and uh, that way we can go forward with PowerShell 3 Plus. We discussed it in the, check sla uh, in the Slack channel, um, like if there should be support since 4 or since 5 and so on, but I think there is quite a lot of modules that support PowerShell version 3, and the new features in 4 and 5 are pretty much um, not related to what Pester is doing, so there is no need to just go to Pester version 4 or 5. So the free plus is supported. It's probably the best way to still support. And then you can use the same version of the framework to test your whole module if you decide to support version 3 in your module. Then there is test discovery. The bottom line of this is that you need to put all of your code inside of Pester controlled blocks. So if you are importing your function, you would do that in a before all block. If you are putting some code in between like describe and it, you would also put that into before all block. But not many other changes. You just need to make sure that when the discovery passes, it doesn't run any code of your own. And then when the test is run by itself, um, it will run code of your own unless you are a framework author who is building a buff pester, I think like DBHX, there you would automate the same function and it would just work kind of automatically because it's prepared to be wrapped in your own functions, wrapped in for each loops, and all of that would just stay. But first we would generate the specification for the tests and then they would be run 
like a tree. And it brings better filtering, has potential to like, has ton of better stuff because then I can take the object that I discovered, inject it in your test, and you can look at it and just say, okay, this is like test that's in a describe, that's in another describe with this name and this tag, and I want to do this special action, whatever you can come up with. Then this is the result object. If you've been to my internal stock, uh, you already see it, seen it. Um, this is kind of how it looks like. It's just PN PS custom objects and it's way more data. But what will be there is like a structure. So the first level is the file. The second is the describe. Then it's, uh, and on the describe there are tests. And this can be nested. So the describe object can be inside of a describe object, inside of a describe object, or the same applies to context. They are the same thing. And so you get this hierarchy that you can use and process to make a dashboard or to make a result or to combine it from multiple runs and so on. Then this operational state that's stored as a result in the object. So then when you get the whole tree back, you can get like logs, you can get stuff like this mock run like this and it couldn't find this filter because this filter in it didn't pass. And then you can look at it later and just see, okay, this, this mock should be applied here. So why it didn't pass? And then you realize, okay, I'm just putting the string on the wrong side of EQ and that's the whole problem and so on. And also like we've been working on this AST thing or seemingly science have been working on it. So we can take the filter apart and annotate it and just show you like if you have end in the middle, then it shows you like this part passed and this part didn't pass and the whole end didn't pass. So yeah, that could be attached to the result object as well so you don't get destructive loggings onto the screen. Uh, then correct scoping of describe. So this is very internal and technical. So if you do this normally, then this A will go here and then if you run the test again, A will be already defined. So maybe if you assumed that the A doesn't exist at the start or you don't want it to be polluting this test, then you're out of luck. So that's fixed because right now it works like this. We dot source this above the describe and then it pollutes both of the scopes. So this is a new scope. This is just the dot sourcing. And in Pester version 5, it looks like this. So you get one extra scope above every describe so you don't cross pollute. Then the same goes for it. So for example, here I'm setting this BE variable, consuming it here and changing it, and then I want to write it out. So in Pester version 4, this stays with the same value because it works like this. This one has one extra scope. But that's probably not what you want. What you want is to be able to overwrite the value, so those should be all like the same script. So if you have something like this, where you are trying to handle removing, removing the resource yourself, and then you uh, refactor it to like a better form, and you would do this, so you have the it, and then you have after each that does the same thing as finally, this should pass. So this shouldn't be any change. But in version 4, it is, because then this resource variable wouldn't exist in, in, like in this place. With version 5, it will be there, because they're all in the same scope. So that's one of the, fix, one of the fixes. Also, mocks would be scoped based on where you put them. So usually, people are very confused about this, and I was myself as well. So if you have this mock, which is defined inside of it, in version 4, it will leak in the whole describe or context block that contains it. So then F called here will still point to this mock, even though they are in a totally different test. And if you would want to isolate those, you would have to add another level of context, and that's very inconvenient. So in version 5, there will be based on where, where they are placed. So this one would be scoped to whole describe. Uh, resolvable in whole describe. This one would be resolvable in the whole it block, just in the it block. So the result from version 4 is that you get mocks everywhere. Result from version 5 is that you get the mock in the first one where you actually want the mock and you don't get the mock in the second it. So very small change but I think very useful. Um, the assertion names are changed from assert uh, a cert mock called to should invoke. That's also for discussion, but we agreed in the issue that this is the best name. So now everything is under should instead of having those two 
oddballs of assert dash something. And then one thing that I'm thinking about and I like it more and more is this compound assertions. So if I would do something like this in my test and I see a lot of people do it to put multiple assertions in their tests, then this assertion would fail and the whole test would fail or this assertion would fail and the whole test will fail. But with the change, the assertions wouldn't fail by default. They would just report to the framework that there is an error. So if both of them don't pass, you would get errors from both of them and you know what happened. Or optionally, you could guess, I got pass on this name, but not on the age. So then you have like whole descriptive document of what has been tested and what hasn't been tested. And then you can, of course, force it to fail the same old way if you have like a guard assertion which checks this is the baseline and without it, nothing else should work. So this is something that I would really like to have and it should be also quite easy to revert it to the previous behavior with, uh, with like a feature switch or default parameter. And then maybe other stuff, you can suggest your own. So this is overview of the version five. Are there any questions, comments, or can we focus on this like path forward? Yeah. Okay, that, sorry, repeat question, yeah. The question was uh, which features would need to be skipped if the compatibility with version four was kept. Um, the main feature would be the discovery because there you are just saying it has to be in the pester control blocks and if it's not, you cannot just do the first pass on the code unless we do it with AST, but then it limits the stuff that we can do. So we cannot just generate tests through for each by grabbing all the files in the current current folder and checking everything. So this whole discovery, uh, the better filtering, because now the filtering is just doing so many assumptions and it's just running so much code. Skipping of the setups because that's also linked to the discovery and so on. So yeah, that would be that would be the main feature that would be lost. And there is tons of potential because then it generates the the result object and like discovery object. So you can use that and you can tell it just run the tests that previously failed or here's already discovered set of tests in my test suit that has 20,000 tests and I just want to run 20 of them here and 20 of them here. So you can apply different filters on them and so on. So there's tons of potential in this change but it's not compatible with version four at all. Yeah. Okay. So right now the version five, ah, sorry. Yeah, so the question is uh, what, does it, what does that mean for performance and for speed? So right now the version five is slightly slower than version four because of, especially in the mocking area, because in the old version, the mock set is kind of pre pre-calculated uh, because you overwrite it all the time. In the new approach, you have to resolve it like, is the mock in this scope and is it in this scope? And then you aggregate it so you can see what all mocks are applied and so on. But I'm working on making it faster. The core that runs the actual tests, I think, I'm not sure if the measurements in version four and version five are comparable because I didn't do that many of them. I just focus on making it faster. And also what can be done is that the core, the thing that runs everything in the middle and just calls back to the script box, it can be made as a binary module. That was an option that we were talking about as well with Stefan, and that would make it also much faster. So I understand that having great features is awesome, but it also has to be fast, especially for like a big, big uh, test suits that have tons of tests. So thinking about it as well, but, uh, if there are breaking changes, this can be like one of the boundaries, one of the boundaries that need to be passed before the release. So there could be metrics and goals. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, you talked about the proposal to make uh, aggregated uh, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, aggregated assertions, or I call them compound assertions. So, yeah, who would like to have it? Sorry, question is, what about those compiled assertions? Who would like to have them, and if it's just a consideration or if it's a, like a real plan? So personally, I would love to have this because the tests are already written in this way, and it just makes it better, avoids, well, writing custom assertions, even though I was talking about it in the previous slot. So it ele elevates a lot of the pain um, that you normally get from this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the comment was that uh, this is also useful for infrastructure testing or environment testing, where the first step takes a lot of time, and then you can do tons of assertions on that. You can right now emulate this with like doing a setup and then have multiple hits, but uh, this is also another option. For me, it's it's like great way of putting the things that relate to the same object into the same test, so you get more info. Okay, great. Uh, other comments? Yeah, um, the gherkin is on the map. Sorry. Question was, if the gherkin is will be in the version 5, if there are changes. So right now there is one implementer who is working on the gherkin implementation in version 4 and improving it. But uh, in the end, it will end up in version 5 because there is uh, tons of uh, breaking changes, tons of changes in the way the Gherkin tests scope, and uh, so on. So it's on the map, but right now I'm focusing on making this first thing done and then adding the, the BDD into, into Pester or maybe splitting it uh, away. I don't know. I don't know yet. But uh, yeah, it's definitely on the map. Other comments? We still have time? No? So who would prefer to have their tests more compatible or the approach to be more compatible at the cost of getting way less features? Raise your hand, please. Nobody? So that means that everybody would prefer to have more features. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's great to hear. Because... Yeah. So you can decide in your own time when you want to migrate. Uh-huh. Yeah, and we will also write, I think, uh, like a migration guide as, as it was there before. You can elevate a lot of the pain by using regex. It sounds like uh, oxymoron, but it's not. You can just check, like, bef everything that's before the first describe, just put it inside of a before, before all block, and that one you can do automatically, like, all over your files and then you just don't have to go into each file and so on. It will be a bit difficult, especially if you import types and so on, but I also want to change the execution model internally to enable this a bit better. So then the migration might not be as, as terrible as I thought, but uh, I don't want to promise it because then it limits all the choices that I can make. Because for example, this is a killer feature, I think, but uh, it's not really compatible, you have to be able to output the this user object through this assertion so you can then line them together through pipeline and so on. So no more pass through and so on. So it would change the behavior significantly. Okay. More questions or are we done? No, no, no. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So the question is if the compatibility can be dynamic for like one test and a second test. Uh, I don't think that will be possible. You could 
limited on files, I think, but then it would be pretty much the same thing as just running two test suits and getting two different results. So that would definitely be a way forward to just migrate file by file or piece by piece, and that way you can get forward because you can have uh, you can import pester and then re uh, unimport it and then import pester version five and run the rest of your tests. So I don't think it will be a possible on test by test basis because pester version four is not able to run just a single test. It must run the whole file. That's why the discovery is introduced. So you can click this test that's here. It goes through the file, looks at like the test is here. This is the describe. There is 20 other describes that will have no tests to run. So I will skip them. I will just run this first describe and the one test inside of it. That's the awesomeness of discovery of looking at the file and uh, scraping the test data first. So then you can just do this. You can do it through UI, for example, like in VS Code. <laughs> yeah, OK, awesome. Any other questions, comments? How much time do we have still? Five minutes? OK. Well, I don't see any hands raising, so I think. Uh, right now, there is beta 4 in the, in the PS gallery, and I publish uh, often. Yeah, question was, when version 5 will be released? Sorry. I'm so really, I'm really bad at repeating questions. And um, so whenever I hit, an, hit a milestone, I publish a new version, and I expect to be changing the runtime right now, and now I can focus a bit more on it when I don't have presentations to prepare. So originally, I wanted to have it released till this conference, but I think it will be at least three months more right now, till like first beta that does this all of this stuff and uh, has nice API and uh, some good reports and so on. But right now, already a lot of the stuff works, so you can discover the tests, you can run them, you get output that looks very similar to the previous version of Pester. Code coverage works, mocking works, and so on. So uh, the edge cases, like you discover it now and you get one set of tests and then you run it afterwards and it just resolves to something else. Those are the things that I need to fix up. But for the general case, it looks very well or works very well already. Okay, other comments? Yes, please. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So the question is about uh, dropping V2 support and aligning it with dropping the official dropping of V2 support. So um, that's why we waited so so long with uh, Pester version 4 and still supporting PowerShell version 2, even though barely anyone uses it right now. So And then with the new version 5, there is so many features that are so hard to implement when you need to make them compatible. And I didn't want to do it just to be able to like support PowerShell version 2 for three months or something, because I didn't know when the support is dropped and when it's reasonable to drop it. So that's why it starts at version 3. So we start with a clean slate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the discussion is about uh, if supporting PowerShell version 2 is still reasonable and Microsoft is prolonging uh, the support for uh, server 2008 R2, is that it? If you move it to cloud and so on. So um, to me, I think it's reasonable to say that's enough cap uh, the version 4 of Pester, which is already very capable to be the last version to support PowerShell version 2, and then go on with PowerShell version 3, enabling a lot of other stuff, and not forcing everyone who wants to make it better to have uh, their own PowerShell version 2 virtual machine, because even making it 
built in VSTS. You have to hack it in a way that it is enabled to run in PowerShell v2 environment, because in that case, uh, the build agent is supported since version 3. So what do you do? And uh, it's a hack, and I would be very glad to get rid of that hack from the build pipeline. So I think this is a reasonable approach, I hope. OK, are we done? Good. Thank you very much.